Because in the Bible talks about an angel one come woman, one and woman. deceives people. So why you look, 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 one second, one second. The Quran says this is a revelation from God. Okay? Brought by a trustworthy spirit. And this spirit is elsewhere explained and identified to the angel Gabriel. So we know the Quran even says there's no one who can bring something like the Quran, even if the whole of mankind and whole of the jinns were brought together, they would not produce something like it. Well, so when the Quran came, yeah. when, when the angel came to, to Muhammad, yeah. and Muhammad didn't know who the angel was, but he went to his wife. What was yeah. the name? Khadija. 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 Allah Allah. Asked, oh, what happened? Mm. And she brought him down to our uncle, which was, which was a Catholic, as far as I'm aware. Am I wrong? You're talking about Waraka bin Nawfal. Waraka bin Nawfal. Waraka was a Christian. Okay. Okay. To say he's a Catholic and Protestant is is, is like to a historical. It, in Arabia, in Arabia, there are Nestorians, there are Jacobites, and what are the other other segments in, in Arabia at that time? It's probably the two main ones, right? So it's difficult to say. Protestantism came much later, right? So. When the Quran, talk, uh, this story or historical narration you get from the biography literature, right? Ask yourself, if Prophet Muhammad was an imposter, a fake prophet, would he need to go and tell someone, oh, where did I get this revelation from? He would say, God has spoken to me, angel has spoken to me. A true individual prophet is something demonstrated in that historical event. In Islam, there has to be two witnesses for everything, isn't there? So there always has to be a witness for, for everything. So how many people witnessed the revelation? How many pe people witnessed the revelation of the Quran? Hundreds and thousands. You are only focusing on the very first revelation which the Prophet received in Cave Hira, right? Right. How many people witnessed the revelation given to say Moses for the first time? You can't. We have to be consistent. We can't just simply say just because the first revelation, because when the Quran was revealed to the Prophet at certain occasion, the companion I want to make this point, right? This is a historical narration. Authentic narration. He was on a mount, whether it's a camel or a horse, right? People can see in this desert sand how the feet of the mount is going sinking on the sand because of the weight of the revelation. The, this, imagine now you have a camel or a horse and suddenly its feet is sinking in the sand. It's, it's, it's not natural. Sometimes when, I mean, this is one example which illustrates the weight of revelation. So out of all of this historical context, we have to really deal with the content of the Quran. Why is it impossible for anyone to match even one chapter like the Quran in the way the Quran is in its stylistics in the Arabic? Why? Why? That's why. That's why it's important because anything can be matched. Any literature, any music, any composition, they can be imitated. The Quran challenges people. If you are in doubt, imitate something like it. Why is it that you know across all of the centuries? Now we are 1,400 years later. Still, we are saying, why are people failing? It's because of the nature of the evidence. The evidence is such that it is demonstrative of the divine hallmark that is from God. Because anyone can come and say, this book is from God. The Quran gives that evidence so that people can be absolutely certain about it. If he is a prophet, the prophet comes with the things that he don't. The prophet comes with? What's the definition of a prophet? Yeah, prophet is someone who relays the information of the unseen. A Nabi who informs you about the ghaib, about the unseen. Part of that could be prophecies. And there are more than 300 authentic miracles, miracles of the prophet, which unfortunately many people don't know. Prophecies, the Quran talks about many prophecies itself within the Quran. It's not a statement of the prophet, but if we were to share some examples here, there's one example here for a person which the Quran says may the hands of Abu Lahab perish may he be destroyed so basically he will be the dwellers of hellfire and so shall be his wife because of their disbelief Abu Lahab 
has been prophesied that he will remain a non-Muslim. He lived. This is one of the uncles of the Prophet Islam, I think. He is a disbeliever. Didn't believe in the Quran and didn't believe in Islam. What the Quran prophesized about him that you will go to hellfire, meaning you will remain a disbeliever. This particular individual lived for more than 10 years after that revelation was given. To destroy Islam, all he had to do is simply come up and say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abdullah wa rasulullah. That I believe there is no God worthy of worship except one and only true God Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad is the worshipper sorry the servant and messenger the worshipper of Allah servant and messenger of God this one true God if he did that in public he will be called a Muslim even if he was a hypocrite inside okay and then he would say Islam is destroyed because now the Quran says I'm gonna to go to hell but I'm a Muslim he had this opportunity so this was an opportunity for that individual for 10 years to do that thing but he didn't come up with this the quran talks about elsewhere i'll give you another example chapter 30. yeah the romans have been defeated yeah alif lam mim the romans have been defeated in the nearest land it says they will be victorious soon again within three to seven years after a period of time they will be victorious again even though they were defeated and this is exactly how it happened now think about it someone if he is a fake individual an imposter a fake prophet and there are two superpowers of the day the byzantines and the persians they're fighting with each other now to say you know what the romans are now defeated but then they'll be victorious again within three to seven or three to nine years three to seven years what if they were not victorious again he will be like, demonstrate to be a false prophet so this is too of a high risk state of is, is it can prove him wrong but the Quran talks about it and this is exactly what happens so these kind of statements where you know the Quran lays down to people of critical thinking they would know that this is something a fake prophet won't do can't do shouldn't do but the Quran does that anyway the Quran comes along another example I'll to these three examples he says you did not know this before how does the Quran know for example what you don't know what you don't know? I know what you don't know. You could professor of astrophysics, for example. And I say, you don't know anything about physics. And you will correct me and say, look, let me tell you. Here it is. Yeah. So then when the Quran addressed some people saying, this is what it is, and you don't know, you didn't know this before, no one said we knew it. An opportunity, an opportunity for people to demonstrate that the Quran is false. So why can, why can that can prove otherwise? Hmm? If, that, if that can be proved otherwise. For example, if those people, if these people came forward and said, we knew about what you're saying, he will be demonstrated to be a false prophet because he's making this up when it's not true. Yeah, so the prophet gave what we call falsification tests in which whether he's true, whether the Quran is true or not, can be falsified easily. The Bible also says that if, things, Bible also says that if a prophet says these things and you don't come to the truth, this is a false prophet. Yeah. That's, where, that's where the difference between the Quran and the Bible, for example. Jesus Christ has said, this generation will not pass, but you shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. Something along this line. Yeah, yeah. But that generation passed, and the next generation passed, and, and so on, and it's still he's not here. Specifically says. If you look the end the generation of that day. Now he talks about, he's speaking to the generation, this generation would not pass. I can bring the reference if you want. Yeah. So, so that's different when it comes to when it comes to the Quran. The Quran offers really rigid and robust falsification test. The one about when the Quran says, Quran." Do they not ponder the Quran with care? If it wasn't from God, you'd find within it many discrepancies. 
guess what? Guess what? You said it's not. The word for discrepancy, if somebody came and said, okay, it's only saying within this Quran, you would not find many discrepancy, this word, many discrepancies. I found another word called discrepancy. Yeah. There you go. There's more than one discrepancy in the Quran. And then we falsified. Even to that level, the Quran is challenge is so profound that the word ikhtilafan, which means discrepancy or inconsistencies, only occurs once in the whole of the Quran in this form. So that so that individuals who think they are smart enough to bring something another word like ikhtilafan, they would fail. So a discrepancy is in the, in the seventh century Quran. When the Quran talks about inconsistencies and discrepancies, it's talk about within its message. Yeah? If the Quran says God has no son and says God has a son, that's a discrepancy, that's a contradiction. So within the internal contents of the Quran, they are coherent. You will not find the discrepancy or inconsistencies. And if the Quran was not from God and it talked about science, astrophysics, biology, history, economics, anthropology, sociology, psychology. Think about it. No, no, think about it. We, we will see. Psychology, science. If it talks about all of these things, you would expect someone to make mistakes somewhere here and there. So the Quran is saying, ponder and think with deep reflection. If it wasn't from God, you will certainly find within it these discrepancies, inconsistencies, and contradiction. You say science. Give me an example where Quran gets the science wrong. And it, talk about man's sperm come from the backbone. Man's what? Man's sperm comes. From of course not. The Quran says, "Let man ponder." Yeah. Let man think from what is created from. No, no, it's not like this. Sorry. Man is created from a gushing, spurting fluid. Let's stop there for a second. Why is it describing? this particular word in this form mimma in dafiq because normally the arabic would have been mimma in madfuq something which has been gushed forth so it seems like the the ma the fluid itself is self propelled self emitting and we know exactly within the human male reproductive which the concept the sperm is self-motile. It has a tail that it wiggles to run towards the ovum. Right. This is the first point. Second point. He emerges from in between the backbone and the ribs. Place where the necklace is. At the right place of necklace around that here. And the soul from here to all the way to the coccyx the backbone so it emerges from in between these two places right. it doesn't say from the backbone itself not in between now who emerges it doesn't say the fluid emerges it refers to the human being in one of the interpretations from the linguistic aspects the whole human being so there's two aspects god is providing two different arguments here the human being is protected because it starts by saying yep. right. by the knocking the knocker and says and what do you know what the knocker is it's, it's a piercing bright star so what do and then it how God is preserving um, <laughs> what? <laughs> no, 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 just one no, 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 no,
protecting thing. There's a protector over it. So the Quran, when the next talks about the human beings, it even gives you the description how the human beings comes out in a place which is protected by what? The ribs on the front and the back bone. This is how it enclosed the particular in which is safe and protected. So the Quran is not getting anything scientifically wrong here. It's describing a phenomena in which that we know for sure this is exactly in congruence with the Quran. Yeah. Yeah. You will not find the Quran goes anything against established scientific facts. But but scientific facts they're volatile. Because science can change. That's why we don't we don't judge the Quran by the scientific facts. We judge the scientific facts with the Quran. Did it get it right? Did it go in along with the Quran or not? If they haven't done so yet, then they still need to investigate a bit more and so on. Just like just to give me this point. Just like people at one point, when the Quran was revealed, they believed the universe was static. It doesn't expand. So when the Quran says no, God is expanding it. So those, those Muslims who are scholars and scientists at that time, they didn't simply say, oh, the Quran gets it wrong. They're saying science needs to correct itself. Science needs to do more investigation, more learning to know what the reality is. That was the standpoint of the Muslims. And we know now today we believe the universe is expanding Just and it's not static. The generalization of, of, the, generalization of, of the, the generalization of of the earth expanding or the universe expanding from the Quran explains that. Is it just generalized? It's like being saying to you this or that, you know? Is it generalized? Is it scientific? I like that you know? The Quran yeah. shows I think this is how the our ayah goes. Surely God says we have created, made, fashioned this world with our own hands. And we are the expander thereof. Meaning God, I, God says I am the one expanding it. Yeah, he has made it, expanding it. But it doesn't stop there. The Quranic cosmology goes even further, saying just like the God began this universe in the way he created, he will roll it back like a scroll. So as it's expanding, it will be contracted again. But but not not that's not enough yet. The Quran goes even further. And then there will be again another. Yep. So there will be another creation, new creation. So the Quranic, cos the way it presents the cosmology, scientists coming to the grasp of it as they are learning more and more with their scientific tools. So when we talk about again as a falsification test for the Quran, the Quran encourages, challenges people to find an inconsistencies. And when they cannot find it, what is the Quran asking? <laughs> Why are you are you not going to believe in it? So an example would be like this: when the Quran says, "Yeah, yeah." So when the Quran says, "Awalam yara ladina kafaru an al-samawati wal-ard." كانت رتقا ففتقناهما وجعلنا من الماء كل شيء حي أفلا يؤمنون Do not the unbelievers the one who don't believe in God the one who don't believe in Islam who don't believe in the Quran do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and the earth was joined together joined together and then God separated them would and we brought every living thing from water would they then not believe look at look at the, how the Quran ends with this addresses first of all that you don't believe and ends with a question would you then not believe what does it do in between it gives evidence and proof for them to assess their belief in God and Islam in the Quran whether it's correct or not after the evidence is provided it's asking would you not not believe yeah so that's why the Quran is saying this is the truth 
حتى يتبين لهم أنه الحق Quran says we shall soon show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that this is the truth. What have I given you? I've given you evidence from the horizons about the cosmos, about the creation of the heavens and the earth. No, no. I've given you the reality of how the origin of the universe is and everything from one origin. One second, one second. My friend, when the Quran 1400 years ago talked about the common origin of the universe, there were one piece. At that time, people believed otherwise. They believe universe is static. It doesn't expand. Right. So the Quran corrected them and correcting people today. And it becomes an evidence for its own divine origin from the horizon. And then the example, one second, my friend, and the example about human being born from the wombs of the mother and the way they go through a process of transformation itself is another evidence from within themselves and they know that it's the truth. If I use that same logic on you from the Bible, hmm? when the Bible talks about how the world was created. Why does the Bible get science wrong? No, if I tell you the same thing, how the Bible talks about how the world was created. Bible? The Bible says the world was created in seven days, shows you how it was made. What I'm saying about the Bible is No, no, Bible, look, the Bible firstly should contain truth if it's from God, right? And it should also not contain falsehood and errors. The problem is, if you were to deal with the second part, why does the Bible have scientific errors? For example, when it comes to the human creation, it says the menstrual blood is the one that congeals the sperm and so on. This is in the book of Job. Menstrual blood is employed in the process of creation of a baby. That is what is scientifically wrong and false. It talks about the four corners of the earth. That is why it's scientifically false, because there's no four corners of the earth. The earth is okay. not a square or a cube. No, no, one, one, one moment. I am saying, I am saying, I, it doesn't matter. When the Bible, when the Bible saying God is telling you all of these things, then you know that it cannot be right. When the Quran gives you something, it asks to define errors. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible should be free from errors, but it's not. So I'm, let me wrap this up. Our belief is, we believe in the revelation given to Moses, the Prophet and Isa Christ, the son of Mary. What is the basis yep, of your Peace be upon them. And we believe this revelation was taught by them. But unfortunately, what is in our hands today is not the p pristine, unadulterated, clear message and revelation that was given to them. It is a collection of books written by people attributing what it was given to those two messengers. What method? You take care. And I enjoyed the conversation. Do you use that same argument? about you know that so many books in the world, is, is there not so many Qur'ans? Hmm? Is there not so many different Qur'ans? No, no? the Qur'an is one, that's not a different Qur'an, it's a reading that every single one of them I just mentioned, Hafs, Wars, Susi, Duri, Qalun, Nafi, all of these readings are authentically recited by the Prophet, to who? To a community in which, in which to make it easy Excuse and facilitate me. them to learn the Quran. They're and all the book, divinely... Book, he's a heckler, he's a, he's a clown. No, not a heckler. So I'm the Quran in those... Can, come closer, no. before you go. No, no, because I can't listen to it. No, no, man, I have to go. Last 30, no, last 30 here, seconds. Here, last 30 seconds. Last 30 seconds. No, 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 because he's a heckler, I can't speak to you. The date of the No, what I'm saying, the readings of the Quran, the Qiraat of the Quran, Yes. these authentic readings are all from from God. Who, who has That's the difference. You take care. Yeah, have Read the Quran, reflect uh, on it. Thank you. you. Okay, okay. Okay. And alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, and ignore the clown and the heckler.
Why can't you stand? My uncle tall? is not a clown. I'm talking no, about you. The that. clown. You see, he's so ugly, he has to cover his face. Your like here with me. So, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Come here and stand here, you see? Do you have any theories? <laughs> anything, I threw you everything wrong. But you are to cover up. I Why? Come on, I challenge you. Make this cover up. 